products in a positive way. And we're working to change that with this emerging technology fund. Uh, the approach we take with the fund is different from what you might expect from government. Uh, it's not about a giveaway. Uh, it's using incentives, uh, investment that lead to innovation. Here in Texas, we don't just commission studies to learn fascinating information, but we're about finding marketable technologies, fueling those innovations, refinement, if you will, starting ventures that turn a profit. You might say that the old academic motto of publish or perish is being replaced by patent or perish. <laughs> um, Today's announcement is the latest example of our efforts to find great ideas born in those university laboratories, invest in them to generate products that can ultimately create jobs, turn a profit, keep our state's economy going, and that's not to even mention the powerful impact that he is going to have on uh, maybe you or your children or your children's children from the standpoint of finding the cure for breast cancer prostate cancer that impacts so many of our lives. These partnerships also benefit the universities. I would argue that our Emerging Technology Fund is the mechanism for enhancing a school's magnetism for investment and innovation. Uh, Dr. Cotter and I were having that exact conversation earlier this afternoon. Uh, we, we know there's a lot of talk about tier one institution. How do you get to be a tier one institution? Um, and higher education is, is essential to the continued growth of our state, the reputation of our state, the success of our state. I would say the success of our citizens. However, those conversations on how we attain the tier one institutions that we need and deserve in this state includes approaches like the one we're discussing today. It's a journey to get to be a tier one institution. The University of, of, of Houston has taken a large step in that direction today to be a tier one institution. Those conversations have to have action actions that ultimately will yield better benefits in the terms of funding, innovation, life-changing outcomes, and it's, I think, because the accountability and the ownership uh, that is at the heart of this emerging technology fund that makes that possible. Um, it's part of the Texas mindset and the things that breed success in every area of endeavor, of endeavor excuse me, the kind of success that's increasingly rare in the world um, during these tough economic times. Despite global economic concerns that are striking fear into the hearts of investors and business owners and families, Texas is actually doing comparatively well because we made the conscientious decision back in 2003 to hold down our spending and cut taxes and create a more predictable regulatory climate. Our state's better prepared than most to handle this current crisis. Add that the strategic value of the investment programs that we have, like the Emerging Technology Fund and the Enterprise Fund, then you begin to see why there are more Fortune 500 companies call Texas home than any other state now. Why last year, 70% of all the jobs created in America were created in Texas. And I might add, the vast majority of those were in the private sector. In these tough times, we need to continue to invest wisely in opportunities that will strengthen our state and create jobs in our state. And that is why I have asked the legislature to continue funding the Emerging Technology Fund. It's announcements like these today that I think show the people that these are dollars that are used wisely that will multiply many fold and create an environment in the state. You know, a lot of companies are driven away from other states because of the heaps of taxes that get put on them, uh, the burdens of the regulatory uh, climate on 
their heads. And I believe that those companies will continue to seek out Texas. When they get here, they're going to find a bias for relative research and a culture of innovation that rewards the best and the brightest. Human capital is the key consideration of the Emerging Technology Fund. We're always on the outlook for subject matter experts that will propel us to the front of the pack. The Emerging Technology Fund makes it worth their while to choose Texas because it gives them the resources that they need to succeed. And we're certainly doing that with this $5.5 million investment, which has been made possible to welcome the subject matter expert in this field to Texas. Uh, nobody in the world is better at this research than the man who is standing with me on this stage. This is a powerful moment for the University of Houston, for the state of Texas, and uh, Dr. Gustafson, I want to say welcome to Texas. Thank you for being here, and we're excited to have your expertise. I'm very confident that the partnership between the University of Houston and Methodist Hospital will be the ideal situation to advance this man's life's work and in turn impact hundreds of thousands of people around the globe. Um, I know that you will be, as I said in the start of my remarks, very happy with this move to Texas, just as your ancestors were over 100 years ago. This is a great school, a great city, and as you already know, a great state. God bless you for coming and being with us. Thank you very much, uh, Governor Perry. Uh, we uh, thank you for the help and assistance through the ETF fund and we thank you for placing your trust in this university. Uh, indeed, you're right, this is a monumental step for us toward our pursuit for, to become a top tier institution here in the state of Texas. And we have many more in the pipeline and to come, just giving you a warning that we would be coming again. Um, now it is uh, my pleasure to introduce to you this academic quarterback that we have here today, and that's our new hire, Professor Jean-Ac Gustafsson. He is the world's foremost researcher in, uh, on hormones, and he's the leading figure in the world in breast and prostate cancer research. He comes to us from Karolinska Institute in Sweden, which is known for its cancer research. He has been honored by many governments organizations, universities around the world, from Japan to Germany, from China to Italy, for his work with prizes, honorary degrees, and visiting professorships. He holds membership in National Academy of Sciences and, and Academy of Arts and Sciences, both rare distinctions. He, ha he was being courted by, of course, many universities, as you can imagine, with those kinds of credentials. And when I came to the University of Houston, he was almost getting ready to go to a university that would remain nameless today. <laughs> However, I knew that if he were to come to Houston, and if he were to meet with the people of Houston, if he were to see the facilities in the city of Houston and the partnerships that we have, he would make the wisest decision. And sure enough, once he came here, I think he felt that this could be a good place for him and several visits later, we were able to convince Dr. Gustafsson that there is no better place on this earth than the state of Texas and the city of Houston. So today we have him here. We, very, uh, we are very thankful to our partner, Methodist uh, Hospital and Research Institute for helping us uh, bring him here. He is bringing with him 15 other scientists, include, in, 